Good evening, welcome to part one of two videos tonight. We're talking about solar panels and we're talking about oil rigs. Two quick videos filmed on a Wednesday evening for your enjoyment. Solar panel waste to reach crisis levels in the next two to three years, Australian experts warn. And everyone knows that Australian experts, they're like a level above normal experts when it comes to stuff. Because when you say stuff with an Aussie accent, it ju just gives it that little bit more credibility. A 12-year industry roadmap has been unveiled to address the rising amount of solar panel waste headed for the tip. Uh, I need to remind you as well that I have done a video on solar panels. Type in Jeff Buys Cars Solar Panels and you will see my video about solar panels and you will see just how problematic solar panels are. Yes, there are some good things about solar panels, especially when the sun's shining like it is now. Although we haven't seen any sun all day. It's been horrible all day and now it comes out for the evening. But anyway... The solar industry is quickly approaching its tipping points with unprecedented levels of waste headed for the tip. Solar panel waste levels will reach a crisis point in the next two to three years instead of by 2030, as was previously forecast, according to a white paper released this week. So we're we're hitting the solar panel crisis point ahead of schedule. Led by Rong Deng. That can't be his name. Rong Deng. R-O-N-G-D-E-N-G. Rong, Rong Deng. <laughs> a, a, a renewable energy engineering researcher at, uni at the university of <laughs> wrong dang he should have gone into a uh, vehicle body repair shouldn't he I, uh, I i'm looking at getting some some work patched up on my car oh yeah you need to go speak to wrong dang uh why is that because he's really good at you know repairing the wrong dings <laughs> all right okay serious video for a wednesday night Led by Rong Deng, real name, a renewable energy engineering researcher at the University of New South Wales, the paper predicted that if the production of solar panels expands by five to ten times, as is hoped, we will run out of the world's reserves of silver in two decades. It's happening right now. Uh, we need to do something, Deng said. <laughs> Wrong Deng. Uh, the right Deng. He's actually the right Deng for the job. Maybe that's how he got the job. In the interview, uh, they said, so, Mr. Wrong Deng, uh, why do you think you're going to be the right person for this job? Because my name's not Wrong Deng for nothing. I'm actually the right Deng for you. That's how he did it. The immense scale of waste comes down to two factors. Victoria is the only state to have banned the disposal of solar panels in landfill, and the cost to recycle solar panels, which is $10 to $20 per panel, de-incentivizes recycling. Again, I've got to refer you back to the Jeff Buys Cars solar panels video where I did some research. I phoned my local authority, and after speaking to multiple departments, they couldn't even tell me where to take my old solar panels that I was pretending to have in my possession. Additionally, for panels that are recycled, the technologies needed to extract valuable materials is not available. So there's valuable materials in the solar panels, which we haven't got the technology to get it out. Uh, most commercial solar panel recyclers simply remove the aluminium frame and the wiring and shred the glass, said Pablo Ribeiro Diaz, the co-founder of Solar Cycle, a solar recycling and sustainability company. The design of solar panels is akin to a fused, watertight, weatherproof sandwich made extracting valuable materials such as silicon, silver and copper and turning them into usable components difficult, Rong Deng said. If you're going to make a uh, product that needs to be watertight and weatherproof and durable, it's then going to be quite difficult to split that apart when it comes to recycling it. And it's really interesting here that the recyclers are simply removing the aluminium frame and the wiring because all they're doing there and again like the whole like green sham just falls apart doesn't it oh yeah we recycle solar panels what do you do with them well we keep the aluminium we keep the copper from the wiring and we shred the glass but all the silicon and the valuable metals and the valuable materials are in the glass it's not just glass when it comes to solar panels wrong deng knows all about this the white paper outlined a 12-year industry roadmap, which included developing sophisticated technologies to extract valuable metals, establishing recycling centres in various areas, and the development of a product stewardship scheme for photovoltaics. The product steward... steward, steward well, if people can't say it, it's not going to launch, is it? The, the scheme, I can't even say the word scheme, will be introduced in 2025 and could mandate recycling. We love the word mandate, don't we? Since 2019, 2020. Oh, we just love the word mandate. 
uh, or penalised for not recycling and make solar panel manufacturers financially responsible for the disposal of end-of-life panels, the paper suggested. Deng, wrong Deng. Oh, wrong Deng's a lady. Oh, sorry, wrong Deng. I've been misgendering you this whole time. I really apologise. I hope this video wasn't recorded in Scotland because I could go to prison for 10 years for that. Um, wrong Deng, who's a lady. Hopefully it's not a man lady who identifies as a lady. Hopefully it's just a lady. Um, wrong Deng, who is a woman, said she, correct gender, was confident the suggestions of the roadmap would be implemented, but was less confident that they would be implemented in the recommended timeframes. She, Rong Deng, said Australia lacked a strong recycling infrastructure and attributed this to the waste being exported to China prior to 2016. Richard Kirkman, the chief exec of Energy and Waste Recycling Managing Services, Veolia, Australia and New Zealand, said the federal government needed to invest in pilot projects to ensure solar panels were designed to be easy to recycle and develop large scale processes to recycle solar panels. Uh, Richard Kirkman says, if we get this right, we can close. Hang on. Richard Kirkman said, if we get this right, we can close the loop in a way that will underpin the Australian way of life for generations with the recovery and recycling of the precious metals and rare earths inside discarded end of life panels, he said. And then he added something about barbecues and Holden Utes. That I added that bit. The federal government announced on Friday a one billion dollar fund boost aimed at increasing the number of Australian made solar panels, which may increase the number of solar panels designed in a manner that makes recycling easier. Currently, 90% of solar panels used in Australia are imported from China. And once again, I have to redirect you to the Jeff Buys Cars report on solar panels when I did that video, because when Ethical Consumer did their research, they clarified that yes, 90% of the panels used in Australia are imported from China. And 100% of the solar panels manufactured by every brand that they reviewed could not be disconnected from slave labour. They did not find a solar panel brand that they could ethically recommend. Renee Egan, another great name, Renee Egan. Sounds like a car from the 60s. He's not a car from the 60s. He's the executive director of the Australian Centre for Advanced Photovoltaics, based at the University of New South Wales, said previous predictions did not consider that two thirds of Australian solar panels were installed on a residential rooftops and were frequently replaced. One in three Australian homes generate solar energy, the highest per capita of any country. And he added something about crocodiles. She said, I've done it again. I've done it again. I'm going to be strung up from a tree in Scotland. Renee Egan is a woman. This video has just gone absolutely sideways. I've misgendered two people. She said some Australians were switching out their solar panels prematurely due to changing electrical safety standards, which has meant that older solar panels might not be deemed safe. Brackets, something about neighbours. Didn't add the brackets bit. Very sorry, Renee. You're a woman as well. Anyway, the executive director of Total Environment Centre. I think we're going to be OK with this one, ladies and gentlemen. It's Jeff Angel, spelt with a J. Jeff Angel, the executive director of the Total Environment Centre, blamed relaxed recycling regulations on a slow moving government bureaucracy and the renewables industry's proposals of voluntary schemes. The current crop of environment ministers are not entrenched by voluntary programmes, he said. He, yes, it's a bloke. I got it right. So I do think there's a potential to move quicker. Angel, Jeff Angel, and man called for the product stewardship scheme to regulate faster and more decisively than past schemes. He, a man called Jeff, said it was critical that all the demission, decommissioned solar panels were actually collected. It would be completely irresponsible to keep sending solar panels to landfill, said Jeff. We don't want to repeat the mistakes of previous schemes where they aim to recycle a small percentage in the first five years and grow slowly from there. Basically, what he's saying is we've got to uh, we've got to recycle a whole lot. So there we go. Thank you very much uh, for 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 just enduring that absolute crap show of of a video. Uh, we've got Rong Deng, who's actually a woman. Richard Kirkman, who's definitely a man. Renee Egan, that is a woman and not a car from the nineteen sixties. And then finally, the whole shambles was saved by Jeff. 
who's probably got a pet crocodile. So what do you think? Um, solar panel waste, the solar panel thing, it's just all over the place. Yes, solar panels are great. No, the production of solar panels is not good. Yes, they're all made in China. Yes, they're all made in the Uyghur province, which involves a lot of slave labor and some very questionable ethics. And um, that's how we're gonna save the planet. Cool, right, let's go into part 1A of my solar panel video, which is coming up next. Britain risks becoming a dumping ground for slave labor solar panels. Clean energy transmission remains complicit in Uyghur genocide, warns Alicia Kearns. Gonna take a wild stab in the dark and guess that she's a woman, but just while I conclude this video and start the next one, I'm gonna check. <laughs> Cheers for watching.